part of the community to, to help make this happen. It's, it's very exciting to see you all here. Um, I want to welcome everyone, especially welcome our out-of-town guests. Uh, we have uh, Venture Tourism Director Seth Wee over there. They're trying to make, make it happen with some technology. Just not going <coughs> to <laughs> Um, and then in front of him, we have Prestonsburg Tourism, and this is Mitchell Pearson. Next to him is Joy Brown. Joy is the uh, Tourism Director for Moorhead, and also uh, chaired their Trail Town. So she is a Trail Town <coughs> officiata. And just so I can say it like the tenth time today, Joy is awesome. She's just <laughs> awesome. And once you all get to, get to meet her and experience her, you'll feel the same way. Joy, can you tell us who you brought with you again? Because I've already lost. <coughs> this is Bob Patrick. He's he run this part of our staff on the, at the conference center and also helped me with the initiative as well. With the trail team. So that's some pretty exciting stuff. Clear over there, hiding out in the corner. That is our illustrious mayor, Bill Mike Runyon. Illustrious potentate. <laughs> potentate. Illustrious potentate, Bill Mike Runyon. Um, then up here in the front, we've got City Councilman Justin Lewandowski. And when he stands up, you'll and all be able to see him. And City Councilman Tom Daniels. And Recreation Director Shoes Hale. And, and City Councilman back there hiding out is <laughs> Patricia Nelson. <laughs> Tourism, Jerry Daniels. Where's Kay? I'm in the back. Okay. <laughs> Kay Hall back there trying to figure out technology. She's also a Tourism Commissioner. I don't want to miss anyone. Joshua Ball. I'm so proud of you, Josh. <laughs> I'm just so proud. Josh has just taken the uh, position as, uh, hey, let me get the title correct, Executive Director. Associate Executive Associate Executive Director. Still pretty impressive, if you ask me. Of SOAR. So, um, and to have him here and have him in our, our little community where we're trying to make this happen is pretty exciting. Gary McClure. And next to him, his lovely wife, Regina. She is on our committee for funding and resourcing because she is phenomenal. <laughs> Gary does emergency management and uh, is just the end-all, know-all, be-all of the emergency management. And he's working with the safety aspect of being on the river and getting this done on the river. Right next to him is my good-looking husband. <laughs> he, he laughingly calls himself Catalyst Assistant, <laughs> and he's a dandy. He's a real dandy at that Paul Pack. Um, then let's see, Nick Hale is one of our committee, volunteer committee. Our volunteer chair, <sighs> Catherine Castle, because she's amazing. She is rounding up people like we didn't even know existed. Our, I think our volunteer, getting close to 200, our volunteer base of people that we can call on to get things done. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty, I get chill bumps when she keeps saying, we added some more. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, next to her is Fran Gerald. I think everybody knows Fran from being um, the director of the chamber. And Fran is chairing our merchant committee. And then we have our guest from Lawrence County. And this is <coughs> tourism, Kathy Wells and Keith Chasen. And now, uh, and I'm Brandon. sorry, and Brandon, I'm sorry, and welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Next to them, Joel Ward, Ward. and Joel is our signage fellow. <laughs> We're going to get up with Gary. Thank you. Joel is our, our signage chair and chief mountain dew spiller. <laughs> and uh, he is in the sign business, so he is a real good person for us to have on board because he knows that industry and knows what we can do and can't do and what's going to cost us to get it done. And that's a, an integral part of Trail County <coughs> sign. So, I don't think I've missed anybody, but if I have, you all talk much to sales and introduce yourselves. Um, just a really quick update with where we're at as far as our Trail Town uh, initiative here locally. We have all of our committees in place. All of our committees have, uh, have started doing their, their work plans and getting their goals ready um, to see you know, what, we need to, what step we need to do everything and how it's going to work out. Um, we have met four times, all four meetings. Each meeting is more exciting because each time there's more done. Regina McClure is, did I tell you, she's with Big Sandy Ad. And if you look over here at these nice maps, 
Those are her handiwork in her, with her co-workers in her office. Those maps even include historical points that we're, we're looking at ways to use up and down the river. Um, next to the maps there, one of our track members, oh, and I, I don't know where Tony's at, where's Tony? He had to leave. He had, to leave. He had a meeting. Uh, but uh, our track team has helped with Dewey Boko, an engineer here locally, I don't think everybody knows Dewey. <coughs> that is our design for our kayak and canoe launch. Finally, we got it uh, just yesterday, so we're pretty, pretty excited about that. That's going in Paint Creek Park right down here in town. That is going to be our access point for folks getting on and off the river. So that's a pretty, pretty <coughs> um, Aside from getting the, the kayak and canoe launch, we have, uh, I think every organization and every official in the county is on board for us to come in the trail now. That, uh, without exception, everyone who has been approached has been on board. <coughs> no one is not on board. So that's a pretty exciting thing. Um, the volunteer base, I mentioned before, we're nearing 200. Of those 200, Catherine, about how many are our youth engagement, <coughs> our children. Most of them are youth. Okay. Yeah. So youth engagement is a huge part of your Trail Town initiative is, uh, is that, you know, gaining the attention and the momentum <coughs> of that next generation that's going to enjoy the fruits of what we're doing now. Um, in one day, we had our local theater director and all 43 of her students joined the volunteer committee. So th that kind of progress is, is happening on a daily basis. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, theater kids, uh, junior garden club. <laughs> we, got a, we have a ju junior garden club now that is in, you know, bought in and going to be held in the South. So um, we are working on funding routes to get these things in place. We got volunteer groups that are painting buildings on Paint Creek Park that are picking up trash, that are making the place beautiful. Councilman Lewandowski has been a pivotal person in making that happen. He is also on this volunteer committee and he, he gets out there and picks the trash up. He don't just talk about how you can get it done. He actually goes and picks it up. Mr. and Mrs. Pack would know a little bit of something about that, wouldn't y'all? Well, a little. They are the... You want to start. <laughs> Uh, Bob Pack, if some of you all don't know, he is over at the Paintsville Utilities. He's their, their main guy over there. Aside from that, he and his wife volunteer as uh, Kiwanis to clean trails, maintain trails, clean the lake. They've probably hefted more garbage than half of this room put together. So, not only is he a, uh, a stellar member of our community, he's also an exceptional volunteer. So, um, let's see, what committee have I not gotten? Fran. The, the merchant committee, she has already started identifying, and I think you're pretty close to complete. Is that well, correct? Well, I've got, I've got most of downtown and outlying areas, but I, I only have Staffordville. I haven't approached all the other businesses out in the county, but I'm getting there. She is getting there, and helping her on her committee is um, our local realtor, Jim Gamble, who's going to be with us tonight is an exceptional help when it comes to business and enterprise. And just recently we had the addition of a local businessman and entrepreneur, Mark McKenzie, who is on board and helping us identify businesses and potential businesses, what we need. Um, we've also partnered, formed a partnership in the last month with Moorhead with their Center for Regional Development. And uh, they have been extremely helpful in getting us the connections that we need to work this, this uh, process and get it done. So that's where we're at. We're working. We're gaining ground every day. It's um, the, the positivity of this. And some of us that are working it every day can tell you the positivity of it is just contagious. It's absolutely contagious. Um, folks are, are now starting to call us instead of us calling them and starting to say, hey, I like this. How can I, how can I help? What can I do? So it, it is working. Um, I want to move this along. I don't want to tie anybody up. It's very long. Um, have Seth come up and, and I apologize, Seth, for the technology, but uh, he, he's a very good speaker. He'll be able to work it out. This is uh, Seth Wheat. Can you all hear me? Okay. I'm hearing it pretty loud. Um, my name is Seth Wheat. I'm the Director of Tourism Development for the Kentucky Department of Tourism. What that means is I'm responsible for all the adventure and sports tourism initiatives 
run out of the Department of Tourism. Um, several years ago, we started as the Adventure Tourism Program in the Captain Secretary's office, and that's where we came up with the Trail Town Program. We were tasked to build a trail all the way across the state of Kentucky, and we did a really bad job of that. It's a really tough thing to do. So we looked around and thought of, of how we could still positively impact Kentucky with this idea of adventure tourism, with this idea of outdoor recreation and all the places we have in Kentucky to do that. And we looked at other places in this country that were doing it well, and that's how we modeled our Kentucky Trail Town program. We we're the first state to institute this program on a statewide basis. Other places, it's just been built on one single trail or one region. So we're very excited about that, and we've been working with towns all over Kentucky. Um, the reasons behind this are, are pretty simple, and I, and I think most of you all know them without me having to tell you. But it's because of the economic and physical health that is associated with increased outdoor recreation. When we started this program, it was about 2012, and that year, the Outdoor Industry Association did a nationwide study of outdoor recreational spending in this country. And as Americans, we spend almost $650 billion on outdoor recreation every year. That year they did that study, we spent $50 billion on airline travel, we spent $80 billion on bicycle-related vacations. There's a lot of money being spent in this. Half the country participates in outdoor recreation. Since that study, five years ago, they just released a brand new study in April, and that number that was $646 billion with the B is now $887 billion. It's growing. There's a lot of money being spent on this. It's an impactful amount. When we looked at the Kentucky numbers, however, though, we only accounted for like 1.5% of that. And when I think about all the places we have to recreate in Kentucky, that number was far too low. We have the Red River Gorge, and we have all our beautiful state parks and land between the lakes and Lake Cumberland and all these great places. How do we only get 1.5% of that national total? Well, the places that get the most, the places that truly receive the economic benefit from this, they've established connections with the resources they're promoting. Um, if y'all don't know, I grew up in Pikeville, Kentucky, and I'm assuming Paints was a lot like Pikeville. A lot of people went to Gatlinburg vacation, right? Um, I want to be very clear, I'm not trying to build Gatlinburgs all over Kentucky. It's absolutely not what I want. But what I want are places that enjoy the kind of relationship that Gatlinburg enjoys by being the doorstep to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. I think Gatlinburg became what it is today because it was the entryway into the most visited national park in the country. And I'm not old enough to remember, and I'm not trying to call anybody out of here, but some of you may be, when Gatlinburg looked a lot different than what it looks like today. And there are other mountain towns around the Smokies that I think are much more fun and much more adventurous, but they all receive this benefit from being located next to this national park. They've built connections. There's a Gatlinburg trail that runs from the park right into downtown Gatlinburg. Um, the place that we've modeled this after most closely was a place called Damascus, Virginia. Many of you all may have been there. Damascus and Addington, Virginia. They have the Virginia Creeper Trail, which is a rails to trails project which people in this area should be very familiar with. Damascus has a history very similar to all of our eastern Kentucky towns, and they had an industry that really drove the basis of their economy for the greatest part of the 20th century. And as that industry dried up and left, the jobs went, the population went, um, we saw our downtowns being boarded up, businesses were closing. They built this trail in the mid-70s. In the early 1990s, a lady who lived in Damascus noticed that there was nowhere in town for somebody to rent a bicycle. She started renting bicycles out of her garage. Now this town of less than 2,000 people has six bicycle shops. They have 20 bed and breakfast. Restaurants in and around Damascus attribute something like 75% of their receipts solely to the Virginia Creeper Trail, that rail to trail project. They also have earned the reputation as the friendliest town on the Appalachian Trail. They're the intersection of these two great trail systems, and they've bought into this idea of adventure tourism and providing good, fun places to visit. So if Damascus can do it, we can do it, and they've been a great help to us as we put this together. The other big reason, I mentioned two reasons. One's the economics of it. Two is the, um, the physical health. In 1990, there wasn't a state in the country with an obesity rate higher than 20%. 20 years later, there was an estate in the country with an obesity rate of less than 20%. When you think about what happened in that 20 year span, it's pretty obvious, but just like I started my evening, I spend all my time in front of screens now. And sometimes screens that don't work, but you know, we've all got iPhones and iPads and cable TV and all this. We're not experiencing our natural world as much as we used to be. We're more sedentary than we used to be. And all these different contributing factors have led us into, you know, not necessarily the place we want to be when it comes to physical health. 
And unfortunately still, Kentucky continues to find itself on the wrong end of those lists. When we look at childhood obesity rates, heart disease, cardiovascular issues, all these things that can't necessarily be fixed by outdoor recreation or adventure tourism, but I believe that by improving access and creating more opportunities, especially for our younger generations, to get outside and simply move around and be healthy and have fun doing it, that can be a major component when we try to start to reverse you know, some of these pretty alarming health statistics. So with all that in mind, that's how we created the Kentucky Trail Town Program. And we've changed it over the years, we've worked on it, we've tried to make it better because you know, we've learned as we've gone through this process too. There are three main components to completing this program. The first one deals with trail connections. Um, I mentioned the six bike shops in Damascus that serve that, that rails to trails project. What happens is you go to a bike shop and you're in a bicycle. Then about every half hour, they put you on a van and drive you to the top of the mountain where you get on the trail, and then you ride your bicycle directly back into town. <coughs> Nobody's having to throw money out of their pockets while they're going down the trail. You've given the visitors two opportunities to get to your town to make an economic impact. You have to get these people to places where they can spend money, where they can make that impact. Um, the second part of the program focuses mainly on the town itself. What are you all doing to be an attractive tourism destination? Forget about adventure tourism. Are you a friendly tourism destination? Do you have adequate sidewalks and signage to get people where you want them to be? Um, do you have stores? Don't worry about it. Do you have stores downtown and every one of them has a no public restroom sign on the front of it? When somebody goes to a restaurant to eat and the waitress or the waiter serving them, they get asked, what is there fun to do right here? And they fire back, well, there's nothing good to do right here. It's that kind of idea, that kind of attitude, you know, we're trying to change and get away from. We're trying to create communities that are aware of what's going on around them, supportive of it, and they will be your best marketers. I'm a tourism professional in the state of Kentucky, and I rarely ever talk to tourists. It's the frontline staff in your town. It's the people that interact with the visitors every day. That's who you need to be your biggest champions and your biggest advocates. So it's all these things that kind of make up the second part of this program, making sure that you all are doing everything that you're able to uh, to make yourself a great destination for outdoor recreation, to get people that are going to be on the Dawkins Line or on the river, to get them to park their boat and come into town and spend the afternoon, hopefully spend the night, because they'll want to see other stuff that's going on. They'll want to come here. Not everybody has this. And people that do outdoor recreation, they love stuff like this. You have to marry these worlds. It goes just beyond the ideas of trails and rivers and outdoor recreation. We want to be providing places that have locally sourced food, small, uh, small businesses, the Eastern Kentucky University just did a study in the Red River Gorge. They surveyed a couple hundred rock climbers, tried to determine what their economic impact was. They also asked these climbers, which if you all don't know, the Red River Gorge is a world-renowned destination for rock climbing. I have never been to the gorge and not heard a foreign accent. People come from all over the world to climb there. So they asked these people, what kind of development do you want to see in and around the Red River Gorge? They gave them a list of answers and told them to rank them from what they most wanted to see to what they least wanted to see. The least popular answer from these rock climbers was chain restaurants. The most popular answer, locally owned restaurants. <coughs> Talking about the exact same kind of thing, but two very different experiences. That's what the outdoor adventure tourists, that's what they want. So that also helps local businesses and it creates an, an environment which is conducive to entrepreneurship. You know, you all need to be aware this stuff's not going to happen overnight. Cabell's are going to come in here tomorrow and try to open up a shop out here. It takes time. It's about building foundations and building blocks and creating an environment that is conducive to people. Maybe you start out by just expanding a local business. Maybe somebody who's never offered bicycles starts to offer, offer bicycle rental or bicycle parts. And then from there you get an outfitter in who's renting canoes and kayaks, selling all this stuff, selling Patagonia and the North Face and all this really expensive outdoor gear, and it just builds from there. But it doesn't happen immediately, and you've got to work on building that base. So once you've done the first two parts of the program, we do what we call a trial run. We invite user groups from all over the state, people who, cannot, who, people who kayak, who canoe, who are going to ride bikes on the Dawkins line. We tell them to come to Painesville for hopefully a weekend, at least one night. You have to offer them something and you get them together and hand out surveys. These people that we invite are members of clubs and advocacy groups, and they travel to participate in these, in these forms of activity. They know what they're looking for when they go out of town and take their vacations. And they're able to give you all instant feedback into how you're doing. They're saying, you've done this really well, you need to focus on this, maybe it's something you've never thought of before. So it's a way for you to kind of gauge how you're going. Once that happens, you send all this paperwork to me, there's a lot of paperwork in this. 
I need to be very clear, this is not meant to be a quick or easy process. Um, from my perspective, this program is absolutely about <laughs> quality, not quantity. I don't care how many trail towns I have. I'd rather have fewer trail towns that are doing what they're supposed to be in our good destinations than a whole bunch of them that don't really care about it. Because when a person visits a Kentucky trail town that I help market to the world and they have a bad experience, that hurts the reputation of every other trail town. So I want them living up to their end of the bargain. But you do all the work you're supposed to do. We certify you. We have this nice big public event. Slap you on the back. And then you got to keep working at it. You know, we want you to keep building upon the work you've done up to that point because this is about, you know, really crafting your all's own future. And the particulars of this program, your, your, your all's application shouldn't look like Pikeville or Prestonsburg. It should be unique to you all. It should be what you all want to see happen here in Paintsville. And that's okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. No two of our communities are the same. They shouldn't be. We want to have a level of consistency among the trail towns and things like customer service and things like marketability and you know amount and quality of activities. But outside of that, you all should be able to you know really make yourselves uh, unique and make yourselves stand out. And so that's what we encourage you to do. And that's what we're going to require all of our trail towns to do afterwards. And there's a process for trail towns that have been certified to keep their certification. Um, I'm actually just coming up with that now. This is, again, this is new, and it's kind of changing from our end. But it's all about having people that are continuing to work on being a trail town and being what it means to be a trail town. Um, we've got 16 certified trail towns right now. Including you all, we have 30-some, almost 40 that are in the process, and they're all going to be certified. And that's okay. We've had towns that started and then dropped out. We have towns that started and haven't done anything with it for years and years. And from my perspective, that's okay too, because this isn't something that I, as the tourism department, should come in here and force. You all have to do it on your own time and do it when you're ready. As a community, if you all decide this is something that's worth your time and worth your volunteer hours and resources, then now's the time to do it. But if I come in here and try to make you all do it, and as a community you're not ready, then we're just wasting each other's times, and it'll also harm the reputation of the program. Because if I try to do it again in five years, people are going to remember. Now we tried that, it didn't do anything. We're not going to, be, we're not going to do that again. So it's all about grassroots development. It's all about you all doing this yourselves. I'll help you as much as I can. You know, we, we try to be a clearinghouse for all these different resources, for, for grant projects, for expertise and trail design, for all these things that you all may not have looked at before. We've probably got somebody who, who can come out here and help you out. Um, and that's really kind of in a nutshell, a pretty long-winded nutshell, what the program's all about. Um, we've been very happy with it. We just recently went to the International Trail Symposium and spoke on a panel with people from the Appalachian Trail and the North Country Trail. And, you know, we've learned a lot as we've done this, like I said. So uh, we're still the only state doing it on a statewide level. And it's, it's been good for us. And we've had a lot of support from, from the cabinet, from the department, and we hope to keep you know, making it better and keep building on it. And we've tied in a lot of partners from people like the Department of Transportation, like the Main Street Director, all these other agencies and all these other resources that can bring stuff to bear to help you all work on different aspects of this. So, again, it's about more than just outdoor recreation. It's about getting together in one room, just like you all are doing tonight. This is a fantastic crowd, by the way. And, you know, my old boss, Lane Wilson, used to say that you have to get outside of your silo so that Main Street knows what tourism is doing and they know what the chamber is doing and they know what the state park is doing. And all these people who are all working to make this community better, they all, at the, at the highest level, their, their primary objective should be to make the place they live and work better, but oftentimes they're not communicating. That's a big part of this, is getting everybody to Gable, getting everybody together, and finding how you can share resources and, and work together. Um, so that's all I've got. Um, you didn't really miss anything from the PowerPoint. There's just stuff better to look at than me while I say that. So I'm going to stick around. Are we going to do questions and stuff yes, later? Now yes, yes. I get to introduce Ms. Joy Brown. Is that right? Would you please? Yeah, Joy Brown, the tourism director for the city of Moorhead, our third certified trail town. And um, I think she's heard me say this before. She hosted our first trail town summit uh, back a couple <coughs> months ago and did a fantastic job of that. Like I knew she would. But when people come to ask me who can I talk to in other trail towns, who's done it well? Uh, Joy is always at the top of my list. Um, they've really, you know, done this as, as well as can be expected. So I'm gonna shut up and y'all can hear from Joy. Now. I normally don't bring pen, paper, and all that fun stuff because I'm usually here for questions. But 
I'll tell you the side of it. Seth's side of it is the process. I'll tell you the side from it from the actual city perspective. Um, getting involved with this is is phenomenal for your community. It's I think you all already embraced that because the amount of people that are in this room. Um, I didn't know some of the ins and outs of what the chamber does and and what economic development does and now I understand that and I see that because we've all communicated with each other and those people represented on our track committees and on our merchant committees and we still keep those going because there's so many new comes on board we have to keep those going one of the big things is something Seth mentioned is um, I'm in a college town and we have a lot of turnover with students working in the businesses in downtown if somebody walks into their t into their um, um, into their business and they're not friendly, that's, that's the last time they'll be there. That virtually is the last time they'll be there. But something to keep in mind too is you have to train your community to say when somebody walks in, they may have been on the Sheltoe Trail in Moorhead for, I don't know, three days. And they're going to smell <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> they're going to be in either a really good mood or they've been rained out. They're going to be in a really bad mood. But the second they walk in, what are we all going to think? Oh, they're going to rob us. <laughs> they're going to steal everything we've got. But that person has got their vacation money in their wallet. They've got it in their purse or in their backpack or something. They're on vacation right now. And if they walk in and some, everybody's freaked out and scared, then they're going to notice that. And they're going to notice that nobody's there to tell them to stay in a hotel in town. And that's what we had to start to communicate with our community to say, be ready for those people to come to your town. Be ready for those people to walk in your door, be walking down Main Street. Um, I'm the crazy lady on the side of the street when the bikers come through waving at them. They have no idea who I am. They, I'm just the crazy lady standing on the side of the road waving at them. Um, bike Moorhead was this past weekend. We had 250 bikers in, in Moorhead. Now, keep in mind, we've been, we were certified quite a while ago. So everybody seems to know what the trail town process is. But yet you can watch social media that can be your enemy or your your helper, and they're complaining. Why are these people on our on our streets? Why are they on our roads? Why are they in my way? Why are they so slow? Why can't I get around them? I've got to go to Walmart today. Uh, really, it was constant. You can see that on Facebook. And those people have no idea what that economic impact is going to be when they come to Moorhead. They have no idea how much money those people are going to spend when they come to Moorhead. They're riding on a two thousand or a five thousand dollar bike. They, don't, they just didn't come up with that money. They've got that to spend because they're going to a Gatlinburg, like we're talking about, but they're treating this Moorhead. They're coming to town. Um, the paperwork for this process is grueling. It took us two and a half years. But remember, we're just the third Kentucky trail town, so the process is improving. Um, we've been, we uh, continue to have to recertify. And, but that reminds us of that action item list that you all probably have looked at is as you created that, we can go back and see what we need to improve on. Um, the best things happen to us is all the grants. There, there is an unlimited amount of grants because you can put that, we are a Kentucky Trail Town in your list of things that you, your town is certified for. And that helps you a whole lot. I mean, we've got a grant that we did Sharrows on the road because we didn't, we've asked the Transportation Department numerous times in our community to add bike lanes. Um, there was always that, well, we forgot or you didn't get your letter in time, or your form wasn't right. So now I think we've finally communicated with a new transportation director that that's what we're doing. And I'm talking about this on the regional level, not at the state, because the state's got more <coughs> of a um, hold and understanding of the trail time process than anybody. And we talked to them and met with them, and he's going to start doing that. But in the meantime, we did share roads. We those were the ones that they can drive on the road, and it's got a, an actual two arrows and then a bike on it. So it kind of makes everybody aware that those people are on the road as well as a car or trucks on the road. Uh, we got a grant to do that. We got a grant to do all of our um, sidewalks to repaint the, the caution on, this, on the road. Um, down Main Street, if you've ever been to Moorhead, our street used to be curvy. Um, kind of a car set kind of curvy. <laughs> but now it's straight and now there are a, a speed limit on there. And there's also watch for pedestrians. Because what was happening is one of our uh, red lights also is now a four-way stop instead of a red light. Slowed people down. Because if you think about it, the green light means go really fast. It doesn't mean go, it goes go fast. Because it's get ready to turn yellow. 
So people were going about 80 down Main Street, and they luckily nothing bad happened, but I could just see it happening. I'm just trying to rush hikers off the road because they're getting ready to be, you know, hit by a car or truck. But now they've slowed down. They're aware of their surroundings, and they see those pedestrians come through. Um, Sheltoe, uh, two weeks after we were certified, the Sheltoe Trace was rerouted down Main Street. That's phenomenal. If you got that route and uh, got it down to make, you know, come into your town, those people have to pass through your town. And that's what we're getting a lot of traffic. We've seen probably our most, of course we see a lot in the summertime, but a lot of our hikers are coming through in January and February. There's no snakes or ticks. And they're coming through. I thought they'd be froze to death, but they love it. They love that they can come through. They're camping outside. Um, we don't have a actual place for them to camp downtown, but they're going out by Cave Run Lake, and there's campgrounds out there. There's cabins out there. So I worried that, that was going to impact us, but it really didn't. Um, of course, there's hotels, but they don't want to stay in a hotel necessarily. Camping's their best option. Being outdoors. Um, a lot of these bikers stayed actually in the hotels. Um, that way they could lock their bikes up at night. They didn't have, a, have to pull with a tent or anything. The less is more kind of thing with them. Um, we've done, we're, our next process is, of course, like I said, this keeps on going, but our next process is to do Triplet Creek that's right in town. We're going to try to do canoe and kayak launches off there just to give them a different perspective. Um, because we've got a lot of people that are coming through. Uh, we did a paddle craft meeting with the Fish and Wildlife the other day, and they're looking for ways to improve, you know, the inputs and outputs for paddle crafts. Um, I kept in the back of my mind wondering if ever they were going to start making you license your kayak or canoe. There was a guy that just asked, and finally just asked the guy, and he said, no, 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 but you could tell that was coming. There's no way that they're going to let us keep piling all these boats on their on the waters and not charge us for them. So be prepared for that to happen. Um, and I don't speak on behalf of Fish and Wildlife by any means, but be prepared for that to happen. Now, if we catch it on the front end like we're trying to, catch it as a positive spin that in order for these uh, streams and the paddle, these paddle crafts to go down there, they've got to be able to be clean waters, they've got to be, you've got to run them at the CFUs, that big astronomical number that they can run those at. You've got to be prepared for that and you, you can sell it on a positive side. So that's what we're trying to get ahead of and start selling on a positive side. You know, it's, it's the same difference. If you're going to have a, lake, a boat with a motor or you're not going to have a boat with a motor, you're still using those waters. So that'll be a good selling point for you all to work on. Um, I, was I thought of something earlier that, that I was wanting to mention to you. Um, our connector trail with the Sheltoe has been great because the, that volunteer list you got is great. I mean, we didn't know we'd have that many volunteers in the beginning. And what's great is I had a tree down on the northern terminus of Sheltoe. Somebody Facebook messaged me and said they had one. And I sent an email out to one of our trail crew leaders. The tree's gone. So that's what those people start to embrace. Wait a minute, this is helping my community. We're having more livability. People are wanting to move to Painesville and wanting to stay here and live here and create a family here. And they're in, they like the idea that somebody's using their trails. So that helped them to say, somebody took care of it right then. So I got to Facebook Messenger back this afternoon and say, the tree's gone. Help yourself and hope you have fun on the rest of the trail. So. That little bit, she could have told 20 friends on Facebook, guess what Moorhead Tourism and guess what the Moorhead Trail Town just did for us. So she's already advertising on social media. And I never thought social media would be our friend, but it really, it really is. Because it's getting the word out. Like I said before, it can hurt you or it can help you. So, But um, I, I'm so excited for our region because we're all starting to, to take on this project. This is a great project. Like I keep saying, it's a lot of paperwork, but it's grueling that you learn so much about your community. Even if you're from here, you learn so much about your community, you had no idea. And you have resources to call a council member or the mayor or the volunteer coordinator or somebody from another town, a tourism director from another town to ask for help. And that's all that, that's all about it. It's great. So, I don't... Thank you, Ms. George. No Does anybody have any questions? Dr. Kent, can we talk to you? <laughs> <laughs> That's eight. <laughs> That's eight now.
got to eat. <laughs> um, the excitement, even though you, how many years now have you been? We did 2014. 2014. So as you can tell, when she talks, that passion's still there, that excitement. Um, when we went to Moorhead, several of us went to uh, Moorhead University and met with the Center for, for Regional Engagement, and, and Joy was so gracious and kind to send one of her Trail Town members up there to talk with us. Kathy, the excitement was there, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. She was just excited to be part of her community and part of the, the whole Trail Town experience, and that's what we're finding, that it's more than just getting this we're a Trail Town. It, it's becoming a community. Oh yeah, and, and we've had uh, we've had some divisiveness in Lawrence County, in, in uh, Floyd County. They've experienced it as well. Every county around here has. And, uh, it, Trail Town gives that unique opportunity to community build, and it's been really effective for that. If we never get our designation, which we're going to, say it for more <laughs> But if we never got it, we've already seen the benefit that is uh, is just amazing from that. Want to uh, Mitchell is is in Prestonsburg. We went and visited with Mitchell and with Mayor Stapleton the other day, and they are also working on their trails. They're working on their Trail Town uh, certification and have done just an amazing job. Uh, I know most of you are familiar with with Les Stapleton and his energy. You know that he if the if a tree needs cut down, it's probably already out there, <laughs> and he already has the chainsaw. They have, uh, they have led by wonderful example by doing and, and promoting and Facebook in the process and, and keeping that energy level going. We're excited to watch what they're doing because it's what we're trying to do too. And then right on down the river, there's Lawrence County. And when, where's Katie? when Kay and I went to talk with them in Lawrence County, they were like, yeah, well, yeah, that's what we want to do. <laughs> so, I mean, um, Aside from the trail town thing, just the, the regional community coming together is just amazing. It's an amazing thing to have happen. Um, today we got news from Pikeville that Pikeville is also excited on and being us all partnering on this river that uh, we're blessed to be on. So, I mean, it's just growing every day. Just the momentum is growing. Who has questions? If we got questions, this is good we have these. Uh, authoritative folks here that maybe can answer a question for you if they if there's something they haven't covered that you were wondering about timelines things like that anybody joy had mentioned about the bike trails in town does the state highway work with you on that on paying lines and changing signals and all that kind of stuff so you have a safer bike trail you can ask them the only one we dealt with was the the one that's, if you've been to Morehead right there at Wendy's and BP, um, we try to get them to kind of work with us on that, but that, that red lot has been addressed so many times that they said, you know, we're done with that. So we've kind of, you know, just kind of warned our bikers. Like I said, those forums and social media, let them know, please watch out for this area, make great make caution, but I can honestly say not at that red light, but they have worked on us a couple others. So. A, a good for instance, uh, here we have we have a road that's been closed. How long, Mayor? Now two years. Yeah. About right out about two years. Um, everyone in town, including the officials, you know, wondered what well, what's going to happen with this road. Um, it goes out to our bike trail, out to the Dawkins line. Um, when we went to my husband and I went and met with Troy Harm, he's the alternative <coughs> transportation director, and said. If the state doesn't do something with that, is there a, is there a, some way that we could have that for bikes and pedestrians? And it started, a, you know, he didn't know the answers, but he was willing to field the questions, and it started a whole discussion about how to how to make another, uh, you know, another bike trail to connect to that. And then we called District 12 and said, hey, we're going to put in this kayak launch, and, and there's a bridge right there, and the bridge has got paint flaking off of it. Is there anything that you all can do? And that's the transportation folks. And they said, yeah, there's something we can do. We can, we can come out and do some maintenance and paint that bridge for you. We'll put you on a list. So sometimes, you know, I expected when I called that I would probably get, well, you know, a lot of bureaucratic, maybe this, maybe that, and see what happens. But actually what I, what I got was a very positive response. And they immediately put us on the list and it moved forward. What about signing? Showing where all the different launch areas are. How do you handle that? Well, we have a, a, our signage chair is sitting there next to you. Um, 
some signage was already put up here. You know, they've been trying to do that process here for a while. And uh, they had a couple of different university folks come in and do studies about where signage needed to go. And there's already some signage in place. And what we're looking at doing now is not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're going to reskin the signs. <laughs> you know, so try to save some money. We're none of us made out of money. And none of our government agencies are rolling in money. And, you know, we already have something. We're going to build on what we already have. And the highway and uh, the county judge, he's been very, uh, very supportive about, hey, let us know how we can help. Let us know what we can do. We'll try to work it out. Our mayor is exceptional. He is a, another uh, great partner because we just go to him and say, Mayor, what do you think we can do with this? And he's like, well, let me know what I can do to help. So uh, it's really been so much more positive than some folks thought it would be. It's just been as simple as saying, we'd like to do this. And they say, how can we help? Ms. Alone. Uh, what is the time frame for this canoe launch? The canoe launch we hope to have in before cold weather. Uh, we are hoping that uh, at least by October 1st, we will have the, the kayak and canoe launch in. And if you look at it, it's a, uh, a bunch of us tossed around and sent pictures until we were just about dizzy of looking at pictures of different kinds of launches. And Regina sent, did a lot of research on what other towns and what other places do and found, I think early on we had a discussion we want as the least environmental impact that we can have because we don't want to disturb things. We don't want to tear things up. We just want to add to them and enjoy the beauty of them. She found a, uh, a design very similar to this that's used in Asheville, North Carolina. It's a very green design. And we gave that then to our, our, check, our track chair committeeman, Dewey Bocook, who has an engineering firm here in town. And he modified that design and came up with that. Um, it's three components. It has steel and wood, and then there's some uh, rubber or poly material. We already have the steel and the poly material donated for the project. We have a grant that has been uh, started, at least, that could cover the wood cost. So hopefully by October, we're going to be launching kayaks out of Paint Creek. Was he able to keep the accessibility? <clears throat> he was. He was. And, uh, there again, not trying to reinvent the wheel. We already have this boardwalk <coughs> there in town that's been there for, somebody help me, how many years now? Uh, at least 12. At least 12 years. There's been this boardwalk down there, these two pavilions that they call Paint Creek Park. We already had it. It was just kind of sitting there, not really doing much. At one point, they had uh, talked about having a, a trout fishing location, and that's why it was built, because trout are released pretty often in the Paint Creek. Uh, so we already had some of it, so we're just building on with what we already have. The From Paint Creek to the river is just a natural connector. We don't have to build it, it's already there. The river is already there. You know, uh, we have a one-year plan and a three-year plan. The one-year plan is working on this river and the connectability for it. The three-year plan, we're going to try to continue to connect to the dogs. That's our, that's our goals at this point. Hi, Wilson. For Joy. When you talk about the attitude of like the people in say McDonald's or Burger King, whatever, and somebody walks in and um, they're like, what is there to do around here? And they say, oh, I don't know, or nothing, might as well go to the porch. <clears throat> Did you actually send out crews to like businesses and kind of talk to the employees and do like a little hour training session with like, hey, this is what we're doing. When people come in and ask you, say this. You know, did you do outreach to the businesses, or did you just kind of leave that one off, or how did you kind of educate your employees? Um, well, like I said, we have turnover from the university, so it was, it was a tough, a tough kind of deal to deal. But um, the chamber, <coughs> I spoke at several chamber luncheons that we had to remind the business owners. Um, we actually sent there was a, a group from MSU or college there that that, that was their class. That's all they did, their environmental education, and that was their class. And they took the initiative to go around the businesses first and foremost. But they only met with the managers or the owners because that way, if they embraced it, then they could pass it off to their employees. So that was a big thing with us. And we send out a notice, kind of, just kind of a, an informational sheet about once every season. 
Um, we've actually ended up doing it quarterly, to be to be perfectly honest. I mean, just they just know when it's coming. That says if there's anything new. But the biggest selling point is we had a website, and we made sure we sent everybody the website. We have, I don't know if you've all seen that, but we did the more and more head, the hashtag more and more head. So that made everybody start using that on all their social media and linked them back to our website. That and then we made our website very simple. That you here's what to do to eat, here's where to sleep, and here's where to have fun. So we made it very simple so that no one had any confusion. But that going to the managers first and make have and convincing them buy them lunch one day and have them all over or something. I know it's difficult to have the managers over at lunch because that's usually their busy time. But we did a couple different. We did a morning one, we did a lunch one, and then we did an evening one so anybody could come during those times. So um, we try to do that, like I said, but the notices going out to them via email, kind of like a, a quarterly newsletter, has helped them a whole lot. So um, it's it's a different kind of different yeah. kind of thing to get them to say. And we still have people in the community say, there's nothing new here. <laughs> You're going to deal with that, and, and I, I don't mean this. I, there's a good and the bad. <laughs> but you're going to deal with people saying there's nothing to do here, and they've lived there 50 years. But we've tried to drill them. It's like Ashley that you met that day in Morehead. She's, you know, she drills it in her head. I drill it in her head. It just, it's hard for some people. But if you get the managers on board, you, you've pretty much got it. Especially even the hotels too. So. A number of years ago, tourism, and this has been quite a few years. Uh, Tourism started something, worked with Chamber, and, uh, I, and if I'm not mistaken, either Morehead College, uh, and tried to get out and get into the community with the restaurant owners to do classes. Yes, I do remember that. Yes. And, and, uh, and we didn't have a whole lot of success. A lot of the businesses didn't think they needed it anymore. Exactly. <laughs> That's why we decided we need to go to those lunch and have them at the luncheons and kind of make them convinced that they needed us and that we needed them. So it's kind of one of those, uh, you, you about to have to convince them, use our Southern hospitality to talk them into exactly. it. Exactly. Make them think it's their idea. It's their idea. They love it. Yes. I, so, I don't yeah. know, if some of you know that uh, in the month of May, we did an amazing <laughs> achievement award. Is any of y'all familiar with that? We uh, sponsored that through tourism. And what we did was just got the word out through social media to these guys and gals that are working in the service industries here that hey we're watching and we like it when we walk in and you've got amazing service and there could be there could be a prize in it for you our, our uh, first winner of the amazing achievement award was a, a young lady her name is heaven who works at bob evans and when you go there and heaven waits on you i know some of y'all have had heaven wait on you it's heaven <laughs> it's heaven because she is the consummate customer service person and she's an example for what we would like to have everybody in town doing because that will keep people coming back. They'll come back time after time after time because the service was so good and they felt good when they were there. Uh, so we have talked when we went and met with Moorhead, we've talked to both colleges, Big Sandy and Moorhead about helping us with some customer service training and making it fun. We don't want to be pointing, have pointing fingers. You, you give lousy service over there at McDonald's, and, and we're going to help you make it better. But instead, we want to say, hey, we notice that some of your employees just do all the right things. Let's all get together, and maybe they can show the others what they're doing. Make it put a positive spin on it. Nobody wants to be picked out. <laughs> it's what that Yelp, that app Yelp. Mm -hmm. If you get on there and say something great about their business, make sure you put Paintsville Trail Town. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. Make sure you all as who commented on there. That way they can say, oh, they're, they are really watching, especially that ad back to your achievement awards. That is an awesome idea. Awesome idea. We'll all remember that. Yelping. We're going to be yelping. <laughs> what other questions do we have? Mayor, do you have any questions for our guests? Oh, okay. Good deal. Anyone else have any questions? I have a question. Sure. Is this an initiative that is only in exclusive or inclusive of the town of Paintsville? No, sir. Okay. It's not. So you're incorporating all the entire county and everything no. the county has. And that's the real, uh, Councilman Lebowski's shaking that head, and Mayor's back there shaking his head, I'm sure. That's one of the coolest things that's come out of this, <laughs> is uh, this, the boundary, that little city boundary is just about gone. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's really exciting. Um, people out in the county have a lot of things to offer to this initiative as well. 
And if you if you look, uh, we got a whole bunch of our tourism stuff that's not in downtown Paisley. It's it's all over the county, and there are some wonderful things. Paul and I are talking about how we're going to get people out to Boone's camp to see where Boone camp. <laughs> you know, so I mean, there's a lot of things in this county that can be uh, that can be developed and used to bring folks here and to build our economy. So, in answer to your question, that Judge uh, Daniels is on board. I spoke with him this afternoon. He was sorry he couldn't make it. He had meetings that he had to leave and go to Lexington for the night to make a meeting at eight in the morning. Uh, but he's very excited about being included in this. He's very excited about what this could mean for the county. You know, our county has a lot to offer that's never recognized around here. We have sure. the falls at Medley. We have the we have the bridge out river. We've got a lot of things. There you know, are a lot it's of never things. mentioned. Nothing's done. You see, you know, I just looked at the website. There's no restaurants. There's there's nothing. You know, and we need to grow. We need to grow. We need to grow. We need to get the times. You know, it's it, it's a, it's a different time now. So. And you you hear need, that when you go to right? we need to move. Absolutely. We need people that wants to do that, and the people that's in charge of saying, "Hey, let's go, let's run with this, let's do this." And, like and it's time. Like we like that. Like we really like that. We like that. And it, if you, when you go to these tourism meetings, you'll hear that over and over and over again that the tourist doesn't care where the city line is, they don't care where the county line is, they don't care about any of that. They care about coming to an area that has things to offer and enjoying all of it. Uh, so the sooner we get all those imaginary lines out of our heads, the better we'll be. Well, the thing we got to remember is actually the county seat of Johnson County. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> In the state of Kentucky. In the state of Kentucky. <laughs> it's not the kingdom of Paintsville. <laughs> and and our mayor, uh, I, I just I just bubble about him because he he gets that. He understands that. He knows that it takes all of us. It takes a, this entire community. And we're not sitting in city limits right now. <laughs> years, yes. years ago on public television on KT, there was a fella that started down near the brakes and ran the whole river in a canoe and reported on everything along the river. And that thing was probably done 20 years ago. Gertie Norman did that yeah. offer. And yep. if that could be redone again, it would help reinforce that this is not just these little spots along the river, but it's a regional. And that was so interesting to Wait see that. And, uh, you know, we sat down and Regina has, you know, the, this, this has been going on how many years? Ten. Ten, ten years. Thank you, Regina. Ten years. Everybody clap for her because she's won her so uh, She's got a booklet and Mitchell, you all are using it as well. Uh, Lawrence County is going to benefit from that. But she's got a booklet. I kid you all not. It's this thick. It is all of the research done on the river, up and down the river, identifying towns, communities, peoples, historical aspects, mile markers, the entire <coughs> thing. Ten years worth of work she has put together. And all we have to do is access it, <coughs> grow it, capitalize on it, and share it with the world. I mean, it, we don't even have to do that part of it. It's already done. It. And uh, when she made this map, you all get a chance. Please take a look at this map. She included historical things. It's our dream, all of us, including Mayor Stapleton, that uh, you know, folks will be able to float down this river and access on their iPhone. And oh, I'm at I'm at Richardson. What was the history of Richardson? And it'll give it to them. You know. So I mean, it's just uh, it's very exciting. It's 120 miles from the Virginia border to Ashland. That is a phenomenal regional trail if we can make it happen and keep everybody the momentum going toward that business. Mr. Warner, I hope that we do that again. You want to leave the, the paddle? We'll get a film crew to watch you. Can I use my trolling mode? <laughs> you sure can. You sure can. You sure can. Any other questions? Mr. Shaver. In the I'm excited about all of this. It's exciting, yes, isn't it? Um, <laughs> what about advertising aspects through like Pikeville, Prestonsburg, all of is there gonna be anything for it's that? All, it's already happening. Everything's uh, already happening. It is already happening. Mitchell can speak to this. Uh, Mitchell, do you wanna tell them about the partnership between Prestonsburg and Pine School and the market? Mitchell uh, Pearson. I came on, I've been here since <laughs> January two thousand sixteen my position. And one of the most fortunate things that I'd like to take or got the opportunity to do was 
the partnership between Prestonsburg and Paintsville, the four Saturday each month, May through September, we do the Levi's Fork Paddle Fest. And it's about regionally working together. The river that we have, I mean, there's no reason why we cannot combine our marketing efforts. I always like to say, Prestonsburg and Paintsville, we're pretty much sister cities. We both have state parks, we both have lakes, we're both around the same size, and we're like 13 miles apart. To the guests, if they come to you all, they're going to come to us, and vice versa. So we work really well together with, of course, Ms. Stephanie Healy. She's been a huge attribute for your tourism office, and we work really well on our marketing efforts. I mean, literally for next year, we're going to do a full-page ad in the Kentucky Visitor's Guide because either one of us on our own cannot pay for it, but together, we can. Together, we can do marketing efforts through TV, commercials that we have going on in different areas, as well as our digital campaign. And we just started something called hashtag my East Kentucky Reborn. Everyone, if you haven't seen the video, uh, That's check the one out. I keep sharing all the time, well, yeah. with the cool music and the paddling. Keep sharing it because <laughs> it's something really important that we have. It's about Eastern Kentucky because everyone, no matter where you're from, when they come to visit, they have a connection to Eastern Kentucky. So it's about revitalizing what we have. We're great. We've you know, blazed through mountains and waterways. and There's something truly special here. And we'd like to say there's something in the water. And it's about time we all recognize it and I mean, take effort. So, but that's what we're working on. And we continue as well. I mean, I have a huge aspect. We promote Van Leer area as well, even though we're in an entirely different county because we know the importance of Butcher Hall or Loretta Lynn, people that come do here. Same with Paintsville, even down to our partners <coughs> south of us, as well as all the way up to Ashland, the state as a whole. So I think it's something really great, and it's something that we're getting a lot of attention, because the whole SOAR initiative and everybody is saying, work together, work together. What's well, so nice to actually have people that we all see it. We are getting there. I would like to say that it's not there's still some county lines, city lines, unfortunately it's just a mindset, but we're getting there every day. There won't be. Yeah, there won't, won't be. be, that's right. So if we keep this up, it's really great. So thank you all. Thank you, Mitchell. Uh, relating to that, see that's a partnership with the Paintsville and Prestonsburg over the, the past year, year and a half have really, really used each other's uh, assets, to com combined assets to deliver a really good product. As more folks come on board, as Lawrence County and, and we start partnering, we can share those expenses. And as, uh, you know, Andrew Scott, who couldn't be here tonight, he apologized, the mayor of Coal Run Village, uh, is very much in favor of this regional partnership. <coughs> Andrew, if you all are familiar with Coal Run Village right before you get into Pipes, they have lots of money. <laughs> they, are, they are extremely wealthy. And they have lots of money to spend and uh, help with this initiative. As Pipe comes on board, uh, just to the other side of Andrew, and, and we got news today that they're all for this as well. Elkhorn City is for it. Uh, as the more people that come together to promote a product, the cheaper it gets to promote it. It's simple economics. It's, uh, and like I say, you know, you can be on that river and you could float, and you're never going to know where that county line is. <laughs> you're never going to know. You're going out there doing your thing on the river. So, in answer to your question, the more we get involved, the less it costs each individual person. I have another question. Sure. Um, is the Army Corps of Engineers involved in the they are. aspect? Because, you know, the lake is just beautiful, and I'm out there all the time. You know, but one of the biggest challenges I see, it, you know, is, is <coughs> access to the lake. I mean, we have, you know, the, the, the marina is beautiful, but, you know, to it's really access. get, you know, into the, you know, the enjoy the full length and, and beauty that is around that lake, there's pretty, it, it's pretty limited. We are, we are very fortunate, and that's another of those instances where people <coughs> said, oh, well, you're probably going to have some difficulty now when you go and talk to the Army Corps, and some of the folks that Regina has dealt with Army Corps many, many times, and can tell you there are three ways that the Army Corps uh, views things. There's the right way, the wrong way, and the Army Corps way, and that's how it is. And, uh, we were very fortunate here when I went to speak with uh, David Jackson, who was our Army Corps fellow, and said, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we hope to have happen. Uh, not only was he on board with, with that whole thought process, he is now on our track team, on our track committee, to help us figure out ways, more ways to access the water and more ways to get in there. We visited the outdoor classroom, and there is 25 miles of trails. But then we can use mountain bike and hike and access to cliffs with a beautiful rock in a, you know, on a little island. It has all kind of potential and that's what we're going to try to 
We meet on July yeah. 10th to explore all the potentials of reopening those trails. So in answer to your question, there's going to be more ways to get on that water you shake a stick at. Mm -hmm. And they're on board. They're all in. So who else? So what about development around the lake? You know, I mean, we have a beautiful lake. And once you get on it, it's, it's awesome. But like you said, the accessibility to it. But there's no place to stay out there. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. That's my favorite answer to anything that gets thrown you know, at me. Well, obviously, Not yet. Like other, some kind of resort, some kind of Absolutely. Place. But I don't want to build around them. I want to keep it natural. Why don't Maybe we just do one and we're going to be able to rain. But you know, if all it is is representation. we got to get our legislators here and right. see what we have to offer. And that's the thing. Uh, my, my husband, and I hope, honey, you don't mind me pointing you out for just a second, uh, was our former county attorney and worked with the, uh, the judge executive's office in the fiscal court when, back in the time when they were talking about a resort here. And uh, it got so far, you know, it got way down the line of figuring out how to do it, and then it hit political roadblocks, bureaucratic roadblocks, lots of red tape. That was a different time. And I think, um, to say it correctly here, that it was just a different time, a different climate. Now, it just is more economically appealing to to go that next step and try to develop things like that. And we're in a, we're in a different climate, different politics, different leaders. It's just a matter of, uh, as the councilman said, of getting the right people in line with you doing that, with us doing that, and supporting us in doing that. And then that red tape and that bureaucracy kind of is not so much anymore. But it's it's in the thought process, and we just got to line the people up to make it happen. But you're right, it would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, we watch we need Jim. stuff there. We, we, yeah. we, we need something. We need stuff, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's coming. And that's my favorite answer. Every time somebody <laughs> says, well, how come we don't have it? I said, we just don't have it yet. We don't have it yet. we got to keep our minds focused on what it is we want and then go get it. That's how I see it. So it sounds like you have a good group of committees, but there's a lot of us, I think, here that are obviously interested. What can we do to help? Right here. Stand up, Ms. Catherine. Stand up. She is, uh, she is the consummate chairperson for a, a volunteer committee. I couldn't ask for anybody any better. Come see her. She will get every bit of your information and then she will Facebook you until she has you lined up doing something. And then she'll Facebook you pictures of you doing it. And then she'll Facebook your family and tell how great they are to have had you and brought you into the world. Because she's just that good. They need to know that. We have a basic committee of people, which most of them are here. We've got Katie and Mitchell, we've got Justin and Nick and Shaw, and uh, somebody else that I missed maybe. I have to be wrong. But a lot of my base committee is here. And they kind of send their feelers out and find people to <coughs> come join. But we need everybody's help. So if at any time you're free or you, you want to know how you can help, just contact us. We just um, updated the name of our group, Be the Change, to uh, Trail Town Committee uh, Volunteer. Volunteer. <laughs> and so it's, it's a public group. You don't even have to be a member of it to see what's inside it. But you can join the group. And any time that we have an event that we need people uh, for, we post events in there. We always put them on Facebook uh, and anywhere else. So, you know, you just she has put them in any categories. You know, like uh, Katie and Mitchell, you know, are in different categories. Mitchell comes out and he can do painting out here in, in City Park and <coughs> Katie in, in uh, as a, uh, a hostess for the paddle festers coming off the river. So she's got them broke down even into what areas people can work in. Uh, that being said, we have a chainsaw training coming up on July 11th. For chainsawers, you can see your arm. No? Oh, man! Maybe that's you. You're in, man. But, uh, my shoulder surgery might keep you. Oh, that might keep you. I, I, I can do other things. We'll take you. Know, you. All you got to do is come to the class. I mean, I can pay be there while we're, you know, you don't even have to help the chainsaw, but that makes you even more qualified to be there when we're cleaning up certain things right. and just being around. And uh, that just makes it better on paper. <laughs> also, we're going to have a water testing class on Wednesday. It's yeah. going to be at 6 o'clock in the extension office. That's, that's great. That, I'm glad you pointed that out. Are we going to paint tomorrow? We are painting tomorrow. We're in Paint Creek okay. uh, Park, painting buildings tomorrow. Come out and join us. Now we understand that there's people out there that can't afford, you know, they can't volunteer because they're just not physically able. But we need supplies. I mean, anytime yeah. I'm going to do a pressure washing, just a, a gallon of bleach 
comes in handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's another well, thing I want to point out. Or whatever, keeps going, you know. We're all volunteers. We don't have any money. So if you want to donate some, so we had uh, the alley come and donate uh, Saturday. Yeah, that's the water that we desperately needed. It's very well, close. It seems like a tiny thing, but when you have a whole community of people looking out for each other and their volunteer groups, it makes it so much easier. So much easier. So get with her. She'll get you stuff. Then she'll contact your dad and tell him how great he was to have you. <laughs> Any other questions? Are, are uh, all of these, uh, like the chainsaw and the water testing and all these upcoming meetings and opportunities are they on the Facebook page? They are on our page, are they not? If, uh, if they're not, not, we'll check. Not. We'll <laughs> check and check tonight and update these trainings. Uh, just for reference sake, don't cost you anything. They don't cost you anything to go and get that safety training. That's free. That can help you the rest of your life. That's free. Uh, the water quality thing, on down the road, we may need to participate in different ways to get grants. That's free. So anytime you can get an opportunity like that, young people looks great on a resume. <laughs> it looks it great. Work. It looks great on a resume that you have that you're civic minded and that you are participating with your community. Any other what questions? Is, what is the name of the Facebook page? It's the Paintsville Trail Town Certification Committee. It's a big long thing. Big long drawn out thing. But just I'll add you. He'll add you. <laughs> I found out about the meeting off of one of your comments on your side. There you go. <coughs> I know I did. And, and I don't know where you live, but I felt, I feel like when I come in here, I felt like this is a city thing, and I'm a county girl, and I want the city and the county like to be together. Exactly. I want it to be included. Yeah. And we have a lot in the county to offer that's not shown on the website, not nothing. So I want to get with her, a group. I don't want to be against each other. You know, that's exactly right. <laughs> we want you. We want you. Any other questions? Ma'am, is there something already, uh, there might be something already going on that people are working with our city and county government that can offer, for example, people on the Dawkins Line Trail that have private property, some kind of tax incentive or some kind of monumental incentive to maybe do campgrounds or you know put businesses downtown. That's a great question, and I, you know, when we met with the Center for Regional Engagement, that was some of our questions: is is show us all the ways that we can help people afford to open businesses, the planning to develop businesses, the uh, even to the point of you know we've talked to some private landowners about bike trails and things like that, even to knowing. How can we assure them that the folks ain't going to come and sue them? So, I mean, there's all kinds of resources that we can help you tap into if you will just tell us what it is you're wanting to do. Now, as far as campgrounds and recreations, there's all kinds of state agencies that can offer direction in doing that uh, because there is, there is some tax incentives sometimes, and there are things that uh, small business development things, stuff that you can contact Josh about or Misha or any of these folks that can help you with figuring out how to finance it, how to insure it and how to operate it. There's lots of help out there for those. She's shaking right. her head. There's, she a, knows. Lot, there's a lot of agencies that you can contact uh, through small business uh, development and that type of thing that will help you with any kind of grants or anything there is out there. Exactly. If you feel like that's just all way too overwhelming for you and you don't really know where to start, contact one of us and we'll try to help you figure out where to start. Mm -hmm. Like it, these are the things that we visited uh, the Center for Regional Engagement about. These are the things we want to know. Give us a list of all the people that we can contact or we can send people to to get help to do these things. Because we want an ice cream shop and a kayak shop and a bike shop and we want a, a, a massage shop and a hot rocks on your feet shop and <laughs> we want what to, to do it. As far as our trail? Yeah. Okay, where our, where our trailhead will be for this river trail is at Paint Creek Park and currently we don't have anything there. What we, we have uh, rental, you know, we have the rental facilities. You know, Louisa has been given a grant. A big one, high five. High five. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, here's what I'm here to talk about. I can basically get you a little thought there. This has been uh, somebody's thought for years. And we have the big thing river that's sitting there uh, all bordered by you. trees. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we want to get that open. And it'll be a park it's called an overlook. There'll be some parking, restrooms, and things like that. And that'll be our beginning because. Uh, you know, that's going to be our opportunity. That's why we're on board with this. Yeah. It, it, it's, it can 
only it can only benefit everyone that everybody is looking to do these things and develop what they have. Yeah. Because you get somebody to come to town and the tourism professionals will tell you this, you get them there for overnight, fantastic. You get them there two days, great. You get them there a week, hallelujah. You know, you get them to stay in the area and, and spend their money here. Is uh, and that you can't do that for one little town usually. There's just not enough. You know, to work with each other. Show what we have. Yeah. Oh absolutely. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. That's why I want Mitchell to uh, tell you about how that's worked because I'll, I'll share that again when I get home and you all look at that commercial and the, the impact it has. It's young, it's fresh, it's inclusive, it's, it's two places of stuff that's included in that and to the viewer, to the tourist, they don't know where the county line is there and they really don't care. They just know there's a lot of stuff to do there. So I I'm agree a, with you. We just have I'm to an avid that. huntsman and a fisherman. And I know that there's only two creek systems or streams that allow trout to survive. You know ours is one of them. We're yeah. one of them. The tunnel is one of them. But what we also have is one of the most expensive hunts in this area, period. And that's grouse. Yeah. And what are some steps we're taking to get a resort here? Because I've got friends all from western Kentucky. When I tell them that we have a sanctuary for grouse, they're like... Their eyes light Holy moly, yeah. yeah. So, what are some steps we have? I don't want to under, overstep my bounds in speaking for for the, the county judge or for the mayor because I... Don't, I don't for me. He, he tells <laughs> me. I got you, go. So, I'll speak for him, and, and I don't think that the county judge would mind me mentioning the fact that it is uh, talked about almost on a daily basis right now about how to get a resort here, how to get more people here, how to have a diversity of lodging here. It's talked about almost daily. Reach out to the legislators. Way. Reach out to you know Senator Smith. Reach out to Scott Wells. Tell him your concerns. Tell him what you want for the area. That's the only way we'll get changed. We're going to get on the phone, call him up, tell him what we want. If you, the, our representative, Sorry, Brandon Smith, Scott Wells, and well, Robert Rogers. Smith. And uh, if you have a hunting group, a get that hunting group together and address them those legislators as a whole because it carries more weight. Right. Show up at their office. Show up. Yeah. And it's not always it's not always a no. I can tell you I've had more yeses in the past four months than I can just imagine. I I come in and tell Paul of an evening. They said yes. They said yes because I'm just so shocked that it's oh, going on. You know. Yeah. And it's it's just a matter of asking. And she doesn't so, always ask. She just walks in and says, yeah. <laughs> and, "Oh, by the way, you're chairman of the merchant." <laughs> yeah. Because that was a because that was a no brainer, right? That was a no brainer. So anyhow, I didn't need to ask her. So anyhow, that's in that trail not book. You could ask without forgiveness. Ask without forgiveness. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're taking steps. We are taking steps. Okay. And, uh, get involved. Get engaged. Uh, like I, I told everybody, one of our 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 neighbors here, Jenny Wiley Park. On Wednesday, is having a grand reopening. You know, they had a fire there. Right. They, their part of their lodge was damaged. It was out of commission for a long time. Wednesday is their grand reopening. Well, yeah. One way they rebuild. But here's the thing: not just because it's a childhood friend of mine, the state park manager, but uh, Julie Sloan reached out to us and said, "Hey, we're going to have a reopening. You all, want, you all come in and uh, join with us and do this reopening." Well, not just that it's just not a nice thing to support your neighbors and we want them to support us, but at that reopening will be your state commissioners of parks. Those people are the people that we're going to need to help us. So when we show that we are not only vested in our own, but we're vested in our neighbors' achievements, that we're celebrating success with them, it goes a long way when we go to ask for, hey, can you help us do this? That goes a long way. So I encourage you, get out. Go to the, you know, go to the places where the people are that you can engage and get conversation going with. That that's, seems to work for me. Plus, I think they just won't get rid of me, so they just answer whatever, they, <laughs> whatever I want to know. Any other questions? <laughs> this is a good discussion. Bob, you got some many questions you're about to pop, ain't you? <laughs> Any other? Okay, if not, there's still sandwiches back there. Um, did everyone get to sign the attendee list? Yeah, I don't think we do.
I encourage you to get on the uh, get on the social media sites and be supportive, engaged. Thank you all.